Hello everybody this is Dr Madhuri from team MDS Conco now we'll have a short discussion on anti tubercular drugs so this is a classification of anti tubercular drugs basically tuberculosis is a granulomatous infection so this anti tubercular drugs are of two types that is first line drugs and second line drugs again this first line drugs are of essential drugs and supplementary drugs first line drugs which are essential includes h r z e that means h means isoniazid rifampicin is r pyrazinamide is z whereas ethambutol is e whereas supplementary drugs include streptomycin rifabutin and rifapentyn and this second line of drugs includes thioacetazone para amino salicylic acid ethionamide don't confuse between ethionamide and ethambutol ethambutol is a first line whereas ethionamide is a second line then cyclosarin kenamycin and amikacin there are newer drugs like ciprofloxacin clarithromycin azithromycin rifabutin which is also used as a supplementary drug in the first line so these are the drugs which are most effective in mycobacteria rapidly growing mycobacteria isoniazid is very effective in slow growing mycobacteria pyrazinamide is more effective and in sputters like within caseous material rifampicin is more effective then first coming to the drug isoniazid this is very important drug because it is the mo only and the most drug which is used in the prophylaxis of tuberculosis and here this is a pro drug which is activated by catalase peroxidase which is denoted by cat g and the mechanism of action is it this isoniazid will inhibit this keto enyl reductase into mycolic acid synthesis and this mycolic acid is very important cell wall component of mycobacterium and this entire process is oxygen de dependent this isoniazid can be used as both static and sidal that is bacteriostatic and bactericidal both intra and extracellular and it can be seen in csf and the metabolization is through acetylation and these are the very important adverse effects like peripheral neuritis which is treated by pyridoxin hemolysis in g6pd deficiency patients mao a inhibition optic atrophy lupus like syndrome and gynecomastia then coming to the rifampicin and other type of drugs like rifampicin are rifabutin and rifapentyn remember the half life of rifampicin is 3 to 5 hours and it is used as only sidal drug and in um, pro action is through inhibiting dna dependent rna polymerase bile it can be secreted in the bile hence there is no adjustment in the renal failure patients you can see orange color discoloration of urine when the usage of this drug and even it can cause blood brain and placental barrier and acts both intra and extracellular and even it can be acts and leprosy also and this is a prophylactic drug in meningococcal and staphylococcus infection but the treatment is with venicillin but prophylaxis is with rifampicin and it can cause light chain proteinuria and hyperbilirubinemia without sgpt elevations and these are the all drugs where you can see drug interactions with the rifampicin and remember this is a very important point that rifabutin can be used in tuberculosis patients with hiv that means in hiv patients with tuberculosis the rifabutin is used and if a patient is on oral contraceptive plus rifampicin you have to increase the dose of uh, oral contraceptive or change to the other modes of safety and this para amino salicylic acid plus rifampicin should not be used and this patient is on warfarin then you have to ask the patients to change to a low molecular weight heparin if a patient is taking rifampicin then it is the safest drug in pregnancy then other type of drugs like rifampicin are rifabutin and rifapentyn this rifabutin has a longer half life that is 45 hours and can be used in clostridium difficile associated diarrhea and it can cause it can cause this these are the adverse effects it can cause polymyalgia syndrome and pseudo jaundice which is important which causes yellow discoloration of the skin then coming to the rifapentyn it is a lip, lipophilic and it cannot be used in hiv and this there is other drug called as rifaximin 
this rifaximin can be used in a traveler's diarrhea treatment which is caused by e coli and also as a in hepatic encephalopathy along with anti tuberculosis and the coming to other important drug that is pyrazinamide this is also a bacterial cidel and it will uh, more act effective on slowly replicating uh, mycobacteria and more effective on acidic media and only intracellular mycobacteria it is effective and it can cause non gouty arthralgia hyperuricemia porphyria and photosensitivity these are the adverse effects if coming to the ethambutol this is static drug and here there will be of inhibition of arabinogalactam which is present in the cell wall and it cannot be seen in csf it can cause optic neuritis because of this loss of ability you cannot see green or a red color and it will have a effect on amacrine and bipolar cells of retina this is very important and this cannot be used in children that is contraindicated in children it can cause hyperuricemia peripheral neuritis and you are we can it needs a dose adjustment in renal failure and it is not hepatotoxic but it is a renal toxic then coming to the streptomycin it is a sidel drug and orally it cannot be given only intramuscularly we can give the streptomycin and it is only active again as the extracellular and not hepatotoxic and there are other aminoglycosides used in anti tbr amikacin kenamycin and capreomycin and this streptomycin is contraindicated in pregnancy there are few other important drugs like thioacetazone which is a static drug and it can cause steven johnson syndrome and this is not used in the hiv because it causes hypersensitivity and there is other drug para amino salicylic acid it is a static which is similar action to the sulfonamides then coming to ethionamide it is a static and it can causes optic neuritis hypothyroidism which is very important and it can be used in leprosy and here uh, bacteria which are resistant to isoniazid can also cross resistant to this ethionamide then coming to capreomycin this is a injectable polypeptide and it can cause hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia this is very important then azithromycin and clarithromycin are mostly used in non tubercular atypical mycobacterial treatment so this is the treatment regimen for anti uh, i mean tuberculosis there is a name called dots regimen that is dots that means directly absorbed treatment short course this is for tuberculosis treatment which was given by 1995 by who that means single daily dose of first line of anti tubercular drugs are very effective and again this has been uh, this treatment has been divided into four categories that is category 1 2 3 and 4 this category 1 patients include new untreated cases which are smear positive for tuberculosis and new untreated smear negative with tuberculosis and also the involvement of parenchyma and new severe forms like meningitis and miliary tuberculosis then category 2 p- patients include smear positive failure relapse cases and interrupted cases and this is very important this category 2 or have a greater risk of multi drug resistant tuberculosis then category 3 include smear negative pulmonary tuberculosis with limited parenchymal involvement then category 4 include chronic cases that is multi drug resistant tuberculosis cases so these are the category of patients so this is the drugs which are given for category and these numbers includes in months and these are the doses which can be given weekly that is subscript and here these are these for category 1 this is the initial phase treatment hrzes and this is a continuation phase you will have that is hr or he for total of 6 months whereas this uh, category 2 includes hr zds or 1 hr zde and in continuation phase for 5 months you have to use hre and uh, this are the hre which are given the doses weekly and it can be used for 8 months and then coming to the category 3 here there will be of hrz 
or 4 HR or 6 HE in continuous phase and can be used for 6 or 8 months. Whereas in category 4, if pregnant patients will use only isoniazid, rifampicin, pyrazinamide. And whereas in prophylaxis, we can use only isoniazid. Whereas in MAC, that is mycobacterium avium complex, that is in HIV, we can use clarithromycin or azithromycin plus ethambutol plus or minus rifabutin. So that's all guys. This is, uh, these are very important points regarding anti-tubercular drugs. Stay tuned for more videos. Love learning with MDS Conquer. Thank you.